All set. Uh, good evening. I'd like to call to order the m Monday, March 4th, 2024, Berlin's regularly scheduled select board meeting to order. Um, with us tonight, to my far left, is Joe Staub. To my left is Flo Smith. To my right is Tor Nelson. Carla Nuizel is joining us by Zoom. I'm Brad Town, and any additions or changes to the agenda? I do. I would like to, on the um, discussion about the FEMA or the VEM flood buyouts, I'd like to add a, another item for previously approved buyout 4509 Route 12 Moyer, <coughs> an update on them. Uh, and then also add uh, executive session for personnel at the end of the meeting. Okay. Any um, vote expected after that? No. Okay. Um, any public comment? Hearing none. We're all looking at you. <laughs> hearing none. Unless you have something you'd like to say. <clears throat> As we approach construction season, and I know we're going to have a sewer line, we're going to have a water line. I'm as I, I'm doing my NIMBY duties as the neighbor over here, curious about if we have a policy or can come up with a policy for non-town Berlin usage of our property. Right now, we've got Lucas Tree Service out there and somebody else. Sometimes in the summer, there's so much traffic. I like to be outdoors in the summer. We all do. I'm just trying to reduce the the commercial usage of that land. The last group, the Winterset group that was out here for three years, they had the field office. They were paid over $34,000 by the state of Vermont to maintain that field office. So why couldn't they rent space in the industrial park? That's always my point, is these non-town of Berlin equipment should be in the industrial park, not a historic residential neighborhood. Thank you. <laughs> Any other public comment? Hearing none, um, fiscal 25 budget presentation. So <clears throat> I would like to just go over a repeat of the budget presentation we did uh, Saturday at the town meeting uh, for anybody who wasn't here. Um, So um, our proposed budget expenditures for next year is $4.5 million, uh, which is an increase of 471000 or 11.5% over the current year budget of uh, just under $4.1 million. Um, without figuring in the uh, unreimbursed flood expenses, uh, our budget would only be $4.158 million, um, which is only increased by $71,000 over the current year budget or 1.7%. Uh, so the, you know, the biggest increase in our budget for this year is due to the floods. Now I've got a thing here. Carla can't hear. We are blue. Mm -hmm. uh, Can you hear us better now, Carla? If you push that button, does it go red? Can you hear us, Carla? Apparently not. Is 
got a new button there. Here. Can you hear me now, Carla? Yes. Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> so let me go back to. It's good. So, uh, like I said, the 400000 is um, for flood re repairs that will not be reimbursed by FEMA or the Federal Highway Administration. Um, they require a certain percentage as a local match. And uh, these projects include the Payne Turnpike North uh, Collapse, uh, the Richardson Road Culvert, uh, which currently has a temporary logging bridge across it, uh, Junction Road culvert and the Darling Hill Road culvert. Um, and then as there will be a separate article on the town meeting warning for tomorrow, uh, be an authorization for the town to borrow funds uh, to cover these expenses for, you know, over a period of five years. This will reduce our immediate tax rate, uh, but increase the cost of the projects overall. Uh, currently, the uh, finance charges are ranging from 5 to 5.8 percent. Um, you know, of course, we won't, you know, if we do go the route of uh, borrowing uh, for these projects, you know, we won't uh, execute the you know, paperwork until July or even later. So who knows what the interest rates at that time might be. But as of today, it's, you know, 5 percent, which is a significant uh, cost increase for these projects. Question. <clears throat> um, so if, if it happens to pass, can we lock in before July? I don't know that we can, and okay. I don't know that we would want to. Okay. Because everything I'm seeing is kind of pointing towards there might be some easing of rates okay. by this summer. But, but that's all. Mm -hmm. Funny money, <laughs> hocus pocus stuff. Uh, <clears throat> as far as uh, wages, uh, we have figured in a 3% wage increase for non union employees. Uh, this is based on the uh, year-end 2023 consumer price index of 3.4%. Uh, so we're right in line with that, just a, just a little bit below that. Uh, for our union employees, which is just the police department, uh, we have a negotiated rate of 4.5% uh, baked into the, to the budget. Uh, and that contract runs through June 30th, 2025. Uh, so overall, we're looking at an increase of $50,000 in wages for next year over the current year. Uh, another big area of increase is with our insurance premiums, uh, figuring in, in all the different types of insurance, uh, the health insurance, which we're, you know, figured in a 10% increase, which, you know, everybody is facing that year after year in the premiums. Um, our vehicles and liability insurance and on the buildings and everything else. Uh, we're looking at a pretty good increase there of uh, $87,000 for all types over next year, uh, going from 659000 to almost $747,000. Um, some individual premiums increased close to 50%, uh, especially on the, on the police department side. Um, as far as capital budget, which is our large ticket items, uh, we've put forward $253,000 towards a new highway loader, and this is going to be paid for with uh, reserved funds, and it's not going to come out of property taxes. So that will improve the tax rate there. Also $55,000 for a new police cruiser. Uh, this will be paid for with ARPA funds and also will not uh, increase our tax rate. And lastly, $15,000 for the possible replacement of the town hall furnace also coming out of ARPA funds. Uh, and while not part of the um, 
vote tomorrow uh, looking at where the town revenues come from. Uh, we receive a variety of different types of payments um, from sources other than the property tax, and this includes state payments for the roads. Uh, we receive pilot, uh, which is payment in lieu of taxes, payments from uh, the state for um, uh, you know the central garage on 302, the airport, uh, buildings like that. We also receive pilot projects from uh, nonprofits. Uh, for instance, like the uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield and other uh, properties exempt from property taxes, they still make a payment to us. Uh, also, town clerk revenue, uh, birth certificates, uh, marriage licenses, um, dog licenses, recording property transfers with the, with the town clerk. Uh, there's charges for that which go into the fund as well. Um, so we're looking at about uh, $520,000 for all those sources. Uh, the use of reserve funds, like I mentioned before, is another $313,000. And the use of ARPA funds is $115,000. Uh, so conservatively, we're looking at about nine hundred, just under $950,000 uh, we'll be raising from non property tax revenues. Now the final use of these funds will come uh, in June when we set the tax rate. Uh, you know, of course at that point to be, you know, I have a little better idea. There may be even be additional funds we can use in these areas. Um, you know, if there's, uh, you know, if this year's, uh, if the audit comes in uh, with undesignated uh, reserves we could use, I could even possibly bring it down. Uh, but this 947 is, is very encouraging uh, for bringing down the, uh, the tax rate. Uh, some people like looking at graphs. Uh, you know, this is kind of the, some of the uh, um, major budget areas. You know, or again, the um, unreimbursed flood damage is, is a huge part. It's almost 10% of our whole total budget for the year uh, for these flood damages. And breaking it down by department, um, you know, police is about 36%, highway is just a little bit more at 40%, and general operations comes in at, at a quarter. So, you know, the highway and police are very, very close um, and, and very, um, you know, equal for the two amount. So putting this all together and basically how we figure out the tax rate uh, in June. So we look at our town budget, uh, $4.5 million dollars. Uh, I'll look at the special appropriations articles on the town meeting warning. If all of those are, are approved tomorrow, uh, including the fire department, that's another 517000 which would come out to $5,076,000 we would need to raise. Uh, subtracting out our anticipated revenues of just about $950,000, comes up with $4.1 million we would need to raise with property taxes. With our current grand list of uh, $5.3 million, and here again the grand list will change, it's based on the April 1st uh, date, uh, so this number will change as well. It gives us an expected tax rate at this point of 0.7721. What this means is our current tax rate is 0.7574, which comes out to $1,893 on a $250,000 house. Our estimated tax rate of next year is 0.7721, which is $1,930 on a $250,000 house, which is an increase of $37 for the year in municipal taxes. Now keep in mind, this is totally independent of the school taxes which you know we're hearing uh, just uh, um, scary is not the word I want to say. Um, you know numbers coming out of there. Uh, so that's basically it. Uh, you know the, val the the voting tomorrow is all streaming about here at the town office from 10 a.m. to 7 p 7 p.m. Any questions? And I will say that. Um, you know, this is a, um, I'll say very rough presentation, uh, you know, but, it, but it's a framework we can use for future years. 
and add to it and do better next year. Now there's also a um, narrated version on YouTube that we linked. I mean, it's just my same old boring voice, but basically saying the same thing, you know, over the slides. Uh, so maybe we can do, you know, I'm hoping we can do better on that next year as well. And I think definitely get these presentations out earlier. You know, as, as soon as we adopt the budget, I would like to have these presentations out next year. Anything else? Yeah, sure. Uh, the grand list you showed up here at five million. That's it's actually a hundred times more than that, Correct. is it not? Okay. Correct. Because so, yeah. all the houses in Billy, yeah, five yeah. million. <laughs> I hope so. It's a hundred times. That just, just real. like. Just like on your your property tax assessment but on a two hundred fifty thousand dollars house, you're not you're you're actually at the based on the rate of twenty five hundred, not the two hundred fifty thousand. So 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 you're correct. Thank you. They're just trying to trick me with more math. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? And last thing, that number, the grand list number, does not include. Am I right? Blue Cross Blue Shield, the value of that property, the value of the hospital. That's Correct. the pilot stuff. Correct. But the grand list would be greater if we included all that in there. Okay. Great, greatly improved. Yes. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. Um, Northern Border Regional Commission grant application resolution. Uh, so you all have a copy of this in your um, packet. Uh, this is a grant uh, that Tom is looking to apply for the Northern Border Regional Commission uh, for funding for the Scott Hill Loop Project. Um, as part of this, uh, they need authorization, um, you know, who on the town is gonna act as the official point of contact for this, basically. I make the motion to move the resolution authorizing Tor Nelson, who is the interim town, Berlin town administrator, as authorized to act on behalf of the town in regards to the Board of Regional Commission grant application. You hear a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Now a motion for me to sign on it. And in conjunction with that, also a motion to allow Brad Tour, Chair, to sign this evening as well. Why? Are we related now? <laughs> hmm? You said Brad Tour. I didn't. I yeah. apologize. <laughs> Brad Town. Do, my do we apology. look like each other now? I didn't realize I said it that way. Girl, Thank you. <laughs> Here a second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Where's the line Aye. here? Okay. <clears throat> okay. Motion carried. Um, anything else on that tour? Uh, no. Okay, Natural Resource Conservation Service Emergency Watershed Protection Program Project. Uh, so we do have three properties um, that have been approved by the uh, U.S. Department of Ag Agriculture Natural Resource Conservation Service into their emergency watershed protection program. Use all those acronyms together and I think you've got your wordle for the, for the month. Um, the first project um, that, we're, that we've been approved for is with Joel Hartman uh, for 963 Jonesbrook Road. Uh, we have a a uh, bid here from Fitzgerald Environmental Associates, which is the only bid we've received uh, for this project, uh, including after reaching out uh, to several other firms, DeWolf, SLR Consulting, Bear Creek Environmental, uh, VHB, and Dubois and King. Um, all of them have uh, declined uh, to put in a bid. Um, Ripple Natural Resources um, expressed an interest in putting in a bid on this project. 
um, but ultimately they did not, and we gave them plenty of notice uh, you know, to have it in by uh, Thursday. They ended up not submitting a bid. Uh, so the only uh, bid we received was from Fitzgerald uh, for a total of $12,500. which is in line, uh, I guess ordinarily, uh, the NRCS would provide the engineering services for these projects, but they are swamped. I guess that was a bad pun, but um, uh, with all the projects they have, they do not have the engineering capacity. So they are allowing, you know, or actually putting it on the towns to go out for this and it'll be a part of the grant, pro grant package they have with us uh, to reimburse us for these costs. So I recommend approval. And how much of it is reimbursable? A hundred percent of okay. the of the engineering portion. Okay. Yeah. That's good news. The actual project itself is seventy five percent covered by the NRCS, and the property owner uh, is responsible for the remaining twenty five percent. Okay. Uh, motion on this. I make the motion to approve the bid from Fitzgerald Environmental Associates LLC. As Tor said, that it was the only bid, and it came in at twelve thousand five hundred, and that's in regards to the Natural Resource Conservation Service Emergency Watershed Protection Program project. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those, those, those opposed. Motion carries. Um, engineering contract award. Let's see. Uh, turn paint turnpike north repairs municipal project management award process. So be, try to be nice tonight. Um, we do have a signed grant agreement with the state uh, regarding the Paint Turnpike North uh, repairs. Um, and I handed out separately from your packet a um, diagram like this uh, right there. I don't know. Where you're, yep, you're, you got a flow. Um, so, out of all these steps, we are currently on number three. And which means we have to select a municipal project manager. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure this, I'm sure Flo and Joe, this is probably much more familiar to you two. Um, and there's three ways that we can proceed. We can do a, you know, competitive RFP, uh, throw it out for everybody. Uh, we can contract with the Regional Planning Commission or using a municipal employee, which you know we don't have the expertise on staff, or we can use at the ready procurement process, which is uh, engineering firms that have already been vetted uh, by VTrans and are basically on an approved list mm -hmm. uh, that that we can select from. Um, I am recommending that we proceed with the at the ready uh, process. And then um, in the other packet, there is a big uh, detailed process how you go about <laughs> selecting those engineers, yeah. um, and including a big flow chart. Um, so, like I, so, like I said, I recommend using the at the ready. Um, the problem is. Um, you know, this is just one step of all these steps, and you know we have to go through um, local concerns meeting. I can tell you right now what the local concerns is. Why isn't the road open? Um, and alternative alternatives presentations and all sorts of things like that. Just like we you know we did with the uh, 302 bike lane uh, road diet. Uh, was that about 10 years ago now? And the mm -hmm. and the Fisher Road. 
diet uh, was that about a year ago or so I think uh, about. right about about 12 you know so this is not going to be nearly as quick of a process as we were hoping and it's already dragged on you know six plus months at this point and um, you know it looks like it's gonna be much longer much more involved in this um, but we you know if we are gonna move with the at the ready um, I would like you know I will sit on this committee uh, I'm sure Tom and Tim is there another select board member that would like to be on there flow 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 I'd be glad to. okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is Thank that okay you. with everybody? Uh, what I what what I hope to do is, um, in fact, I think maybe I can bring this up. Is to put on our town website. Um, this page. I think that would be beneficial. I know I had residents that approached me at the pre-town meeting and on Saturday. And I don't know concerned. if you can see it, you know, so just kind of mark off, you know, that doesn't show up, but I'll have Chelsea work on it. But the little green check marks that we update as we go through the process mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we can, you know, along with other things we put on that page, um, we can show everybody where the... Right. Uh, where the process is and what the next step is and, that would be and wonderful. things like that. So that's all I had on that. Unless there was any questions. A resident asked um, if a Bailey Bridge could be put in, in the interim of the work being done. And I don't think that that's possible. But I just wanted to bring it forward Where's that this? it was on the Payne Turnpike North, the closure. They wondered if a Bailey Bridge could be put in temporarily so that people could get through until the work is done to open it up fully. That's the way they described it to me. And I explained I that I wasn't certain, but that I would bring it forward. It's very similar to what you have on Richardson Road. The logging, temporary logging bridge. Yeah. Well, yeah. We'll, problem is we'll call it that. Once you start working on it, you're going to have to tear it out exactly. anyway. So. Well, until that work gets done, you know. How long is it going to be until we can start work? And, and right. So leading up to that, you know, even if it's a single lane bridge with with traffic lights on both sides, I don't really, you know, we could do something. And that's what the residents were approaching mm -hmm. me about is that if we could do something such as that, that was just a description they had. Mm -hmm. Well, I know the state has them to rent. Um, I'm just trying to think. You'd have to take and figure a way or to get it up off the pavement and it'd have to be a ramp to it mm -hmm. because you couldn't have it just on the pavement because of the, the pressures wouldn't be, the blacktop wouldn't hold it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you'd mm -hmm. have something underneath it. No, but you, you, you would be spanning it in such a way that you'd be supporting it on either end. Yeah. Yeah, the, the I'm trying to think how to... The Bailey Bridge is what the Army uses. They just pin together and then yep. they put down a, a deck and away you go. Mm -hmm. And if you need it to hold one tank, it's so many layers or so many heights. And if you need it to hold two, it's more. So the But I think that's an option. If we're looking at an extended period of time, um, that's something we should really be thinking about. And I think it would make a lot of town residents happy. I think it would give access for emergency services to go back and forth. Uh, that is a, a, a major artery for the town, and, and so we have all these conversations about the town center and, and want to promote growth, but yet we just, you know, we cut a limb right off by not doing anything. I, I think we should really investigate that. Yeah, I mean, the first thing to do is find out if the state has one they can rent <laughs> or the pieces to rent, and then find out how much it's going to be. Because those Bailey bridges, I mean, they can be one, two, or three lane. I mean, they're really quite. Yes, they, mm -hmm. they, they can, can be. be as expensive yeah. as you want them to be, and with that comes the cost. I mean, sure. But it would be great and it to be, investigate. And it wouldn't it. be reimbursed by 
FEMA or Federal Highway. It's not part of the grant agreement. No, so it would not. It'd be totally on our own. Yeah, so you'd have to take and get a hold of the state and uh, DOT and find out just what the uh, expense is. And they may not even have, I mean, depending on how many are out already, they may not have one to rent. Right. Mm -hmm. Or how many pieces, you know. It's, but uh, I'm trying to think, when they redid the bridge there in, um, there by Curley's, uh, uh, fuel that yeah, Bailey's. Did two. Yeah. Well, it was actually four because they were too wide and too high. True. And Good point. And but that was. What but you just keep pinning them together until you get the length you want. Mm -hmm. and away you go. But I would take in, uh, if you could tour, get a hold of DOT and see what they okay. have to rent and uh, how much it would be for a year or two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do believe that this will carry on into the two-year mark then of based course, on all of these steps. The other thing is you have to have somebody go down there from the state that is familiar with the bridges and see which side to go on because you've got the sewer and water on one side, right. and if you're going to take and put it on the other side, then you'll have to fig they'll have to figure out what they can do to support the bridge off the blacktop on the... Richardson Roadside. Mm -hmm. So, and, I mean, I'm sure you can put those Bailey bridges on concrete uh, block footings, but right, right. But you have to find out and, and uh, get somebody more knowledgeable. Look at it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else on the turnpike repairs? No. Thank you and thank you. Sure Are you getting any pressure from the state police to get that open? Not that I know. No. Mm -hmm. Usually, state police, if they leave there, they're going to the thruway anyway. They're not. Because Berlin takes care of, in Montpelier, down through there, that's all municipal. And state police, they patrol the throughways and the, some of the backwaters. But. Unless they got to get to the capital. Unless they got to get to the capital, it's fast. Um, either way. Okay. No more on that. I know fire department wanted to have it open. And that uh, state police barracks is nicknamed NASCAR. Barracks. They can only go left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, left turns only. Okay. So, anything else on turn paint? Turn uh, turn paint. Paint turnpike north. Uh, no. Okay. Um, Let's scratch this one. I have not prepared anything for. Ver, uh, Ver Zemers. Yeah. Okay. Um, especially. Event permit, uh, Capital City Stampede. So there's a copy in your packet. Uh, Central Vermont Runners uh, is looking for June 8th, 2024. It's their 46th annual uh, 10K race, uh, sponsored in part by Onion River Outdoors, which is part of the Vermont Senior Games. Um, and it's the same route they've used uh, for the last several years. Uh, they will have uh, marshals throughout the uh, race course to assist with uh, traffic control. Um, the map is attached. Um, you know, starting with the Montpelier High School going out Junction Road, um, back to the Department of Labor parking lot and the high school track, and then down Court Street in Montpelier. And I would say so moved. It's 46th annual. There's never been any problems in the past, and I don't anticipate any this time, too. And I like that the marshals will be in place to assist. You hear a second? A second. Okay. Um, and, and then that they that you're waiving the fee. Are they are they, um, are they uh, going to post it a couple days before the race so people have some idea what's going on? Yes. Okay. And so they do this with marshals in place throughout the course to assist with traffic control, but. Uh, are we not making them put up signage? 
Well, that's all I... Brad was just asking. Okay. So just a couple of days. Well, okay. out, on the ro out on the course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the only places usually it's... Uh, they have them at Jonesburg Road Corner and at uh, Three Mile Bridge. They're by Rachel's. Or Junction Road it turns into Three Mile Bridge Road. Mm -hmm. Usually have people there. Okay, any other discussion on this? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, Crosstown Road, mud season. Uh, it's basically the closure did go into effect today. Um, it will be in effect until further notice. Unless we get a uh, good stretch of uh, below freezing uh, weather, um, in which case, you know, firms up there will be able to open it again. But um, as of right now, Tim is anticipating about a four week closure. Uh, hopefully, by the end of the month, uh, things will dry out enough that, that it can be reopened. And that's really the only thing I had on that. Uh, looking at the, to revisit the um, special event permit, uh, I need a motion to sign the paperwork. And I'll amend my motion to, as stated before, and also include that we seek the signage and that we do waive the fee and give Bradtown permission to sign the application. A second. Any other discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. What about that tour? Okay. Um, on the, so the road is uh, the cross town is closed. Correct. Okay. At what point is it closed, may I ask? Uh, over toward... Um, Past the towing company? Yes. Yep. How about a quarter mile up from the bottom? Isn't it? Something like that? Yeah, that's for the, the ones coming up the hill, mm -hmm. but... Mm -hmm. So it's in two places. Oh, it's in two one places. way up by the Lacasses, and one down before you slope down okay, the final hill. Okay, too. Final hill. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, April 8th, Eclipse planning update tour. So really the only update to that is um, we have received uh, about 200 of the stylish uh, Eclipse protection glasses. Um, and uh, Rachel will have them out tomorrow for uh, people to pick up at the town meeting. Um, first come, first serve. So. Anything else on the update on the um, eclipse? That's it. Okay. Uh, Vermont, Vermont Emergency Management Flood Buyouts Agreements, 50 Junction Road. Uh, so this is a uh, new property uh, that has um, expressed an interest in the buyout program at uh, 50 Junction Road, uh, Margaret Lassard. Um, they were flooded in 2011, uh, both in the May right before the uh, Memorial Day. A storm and then again by a Hurricane Irene in August of that year. Um, damaged again in the July uh, flooding. Um, they have lived at that property for 46 years. Um, their damage has been assessed at uh, close to $100,000 in damage. Um, which they did have uh, 
some flood insurance on their property, but this amount was far exceeded uh, their their um, policy limits. Um, so they are interested in pursuing the um, VEM uh, buyout. Uh, be the same process as with uh, the other two properties we're currently looking at. Uh, the other one on Junction Road and on Route 12. And as part of that. Um, we need to uh, sign into the maintenance agreement um, that uh, you know we will take over the property and um, you know not put anything else in the floodplain and anything like that. So I uh, look for authorization to sign that maintenance agreement, just like we did for the new two properties. Uh, I think at our last meeting. I make the motion to provide the authorization for Tor Nelson to sign the maintenance agreement as described just now. You have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, then the other, uh, probably at least a year ago, if not longer, uh, you entered into an agreement uh, for the Moyer property at 4509 Vermont Route 12. Um, and, even, and has even gone so far as uh, putting out an RFP for the building uh, deconstruction. Um, there's been no movement on the purchase of that property for close to a year now. Uh, it's tied up with the mortgage uh, holder uh, not currently want not um, wanting to uh, let that property go for the price that they were offered. So there's uh, been no movement, and the state is um, you know looking to move ahead with that project or to, to close it out. <clears throat> Um, so I'm going to be talking to the town attorney later on this week to see if we can get something moving on that. Otherwise, just like I said, you know, I, well, I didn't say it this time, but we said with the other ones, both parties, either party can back out at any time prior to closing. We as the town may have to t exercise that option and pull out of this program if we can't get any movement from the, uh, from the mortgage company. That's are, definitely understand how, what my opinion. How, how are the taxes on that property? Are they current? Uh, they are not current. In uh, fact, that town, uh, that town, that property has been removed from the tax rolls. Uh, so you've not been charging property taxes on that for several years. But the previous taxes before that are still delinquent, still outstanding, still delinquent. Cinema bill. Well, I had some ideas, <laughs> but I mean, well, I, the only they, thing that's going to get their attention is if you, if you start taking money. Well, I, 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 I'd have to talk to the attorney. You know, if, can we put them back on the tax roll and start, start uh, charging them again? Well, we, we certainly should be able. To, we certainly should be able to take yeah. and charge them for anything that, uh, that uh, previously. Previous. But then, but the other then option is. Can we abate it down to a dollar, then just put it off for tax sale and have the town bid a dollar on it? Well, if you put it out to tax sale, that's a bid. Anybody can bid a dollar. Right, right. Um, the purpose of the tax sale is for the town to recoup its money, so you'd have to have it uh, whatever the, the uh, old taxes are. So the current. But I don't think we're going to get. <laughs> no. I don't think we're going to get any money from that property. Okay, so the current owed taxes, it's not. There's no interest or penalties being applied to that right now. Not currently. Okay. That's why I tour one. It's, it the stopped. It, it, when they okay. moved from the tax roll, they stopped accruing interest and penalties on that mm -hmm. property. What what was there before, and I think it's from like six, 2016, 2015, is still there, you know, and due, but since then, it's not been accruing mm -hmm. anything new. Yeah, I would take in the. We can talk to Steve and see what he says on that. Okay. Anything else other than Moyer property? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, local Cannabis Control Commission application. Outdoor cultivator. 
So a couple weeks ago, uh, we had a um, couple come to one of our meetings and uh, describe their proposed uh, facility. Um, they mentioned at that time they had applied to the state cannabis control board uh, for their cultivator license, and you know we said we would defer any action until we received notification. Oh, we should probably go enter into a cannabis control commission. Yeah, a motion. I make the motion to enter into the local cannabis control commission to um, provide opportunity to discuss. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so now we're in the local cannabis control commission. Um, so they have uh, filed the you know their application with the cannabis control board, uh, and uh, they are okay with the uh, application as presented and look to the town. Uh, as the Cannabis Control Commission uh, to approve this application as well. And I recommend that approval. Yes. Well, I guess we need a second first. Here's a second. Uh, I'll second for conversation. Okay. And any further discussion? Sure. So I guess when they came and they addressed the, the, the board and there was a few questions that, that was asked and one of them was um, have they reached out and talked to the neighbors mm -hmm. you know since then I had one of the neighbors ask me I said something uh, to one of the neighbors and they were not for it and, and so when, when you talk about the talking about the neighborhood um, Walker Road, there's a row of trees between my house and Walker Road. Am I part of the neighborhood? Because I know they never came and talked to me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just wondering if we don't necessarily have it have it warned on a location, but giving the, opportunity. The location well, is confidential. Okay. Um, as, a, as a cultivator, it is confidential. So. Okay. Um, how do we give opportunity to the, the people in the area to come in and, and talk? Mm -hmm. What well, my recommendation in that case is uh, table it for tonight and have the applicant come in and uh, talk about what their outreach efforts have been and what they've received back and Mm -hmm. I also have had a neighbor approach me, and that's why I posed the question um, when we first met with them. Um, and so, you know, I was in hopes that maybe that had been alleviated, and it may have been with the neighbor that contacted me. It could be a totally different neighbor that Joe spoke to. But I think it is wise going forward to open it to allow neighbors to express their mm -hmm. views and so that we really are clear. Mm -hmm. Dependent on the confidentiality, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, as far as the notice, I mean, you can look at the you can look at the land map and see who the neighbors are, and just require that the applicant have the signatures. Mm -hmm. That way, there you have um, the you know you know the neighbors have been contacted at least spoken to mm -hmm. and they have signed off on it mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is is that um, you have somebody who was trying to start a business and yet it's you're turning it into a um, uh, more of a problem for them to start the business granted the business is somewhat controversial to some people um, but it's all something you need to think about when you uh, do your uh, what you want. You know, whenever put it, whatever you do for uh, proof of notification. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, uh, 
it's like it's like when we put up the uh, had the, the cell tower, people came to us. They contacted all the all the uh, budding landowners, mm -hmm. but it wasn't really a fair deal because I owned land in the next town. I was a budding landowner, and then hundred yards up the road, hundred yards across that pasture, it was another person, another neighbor, much like what happened at. Well, same thing like my neighborhood. Yeah. There's a uh, you know that's 20, something, that's something. there's a twenty foot stretch of land between me and the uh, property that the cell tower is on. So I was not an abutter. Mm -hmm. no, but. Well, that's just something to keep in mind. I mean, you can look at it uh, um, on a uh, on a uh, case by case basis too, and. Uh, you know, well, I think that's what the purpose of the commission is. It's not just for us to be a rubber stamp, yeah. um, but to make sure the town's uh, concerns are addressed. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we can. So I would recommend tabling this at this time. Yep. I concur. And I guess I'll make that a motion. And I'll second. Any further discussion? All those. Yeah, go ahead. May yeah. yeah, I ask? Um, obviously, with confidentiality stuff, I'm not familiar with, but that's cool. As far as like when they were here and maybe they're going to come back. I mean, are we talking about a greenhouse the size of this room? Or are we talking about like acres and acres? And are we talking about 24 hour lighting? I can see where that might irritate some neighbors. So I'm curious, maybe I'll come back when they come to see, you know, what are we talking about here size wise? And is it zoned in the right area? Is it in the right zoning area? They do have their proper zoning permit for that. Um, this is going to be an outside Field. It's not okay. going to be a, a no building. Um, Organic. Well, there there is a oh. building involved. Well, um, there's a shed for the stuff, but it's it's not primarily going to be you know hydroponics right. type of thing. Not that I really know much about it, but usually you got your plants in a greenhouse yeah. when it comes to I'm sorry. Uh, when it comes to um, CBD oil. I dealt with the, the, the people over in uh, Marshfield, Plainfield. I have to have these folders back. Oh, absolutely. Uh, motion to come out of the cannabis. Are there any other discussion on this? If not, motion to come out of the cannabis commission. I make the motion to uh, move out of the cannabis commission. Second. Would you like to reconvene the select board meeting? And reconvene <laughs> this select board meeting. We'll do it all as one. Dwarf? Yeah. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I think that was Carl. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, licenses, permits, vouchers, applications, warrants, approval. I make the motion to move the payroll warrant 24-19 for payroll from February 11, 2024 to February 26, 2024 to be paid on February 28 this year in the amount of $65,958.46 and the payable warrant 24G20 with check number 23742 to 23778 in the amount of $115,891.19. I'll second. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Um, approval of minutes. So quite a few of them today. Uh, the first is from Tuesday, January 2nd, 2024. And that was the evening that the corporation president of the fire department came and spoke to us. And also the chair of the school board. Oh, yes. Yes, Smith. I make the motion to approve the minutes as presented to us this evening for Tuesday, January 2nd, 2024. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And the minutes for Monday, January 15th, 2024. And this was the first meeting that the 
Um, cannabis license uh, came to us. I make the motion to approve the minutes of Monday, January 15th, 2024 as well. And just one thing is moving the heading at the bottom of the first page to go right above the top of the second page. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, Monday, January 22nd, 2024. And this is primarily a budget session. And I make the motion to also approve the minutes of Monday, January 22nd, 2024. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Minutes also, Monday. We, uh, we have Monday, January 29th, 2024. This was the first public hearing on the charter change, local options tax, as well as um, approving the town budget and town meeting warning. Your motion. I make yep. a motion to also approve the Monday, January 29, 2024 minutes as presented this evening. A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, then one, the last set is for Monday, February 5th, 2024, which was the second uh, public hearing on the charter change. And that was really the big item for that night. Your motion? And I'll, set, I'll uh, make a motion to approve the Monday, February 5th, 2024 minutes as well. I'll second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And where are we here? Uh, round table, Joe. Oh, I think uh, Saturday, March 23rd, Portland Fire Department's going to be having a pie breakfast. It's a fundraiser which uh, open to the public, and it's a great community event. I'd love to see each and every one of you there. Great opportunity to talk to the town folks. And the one that was held last year was amazing. It was. Well, well received and uh, really very, March 23, very put, it on to you. put together. No, I was just going to say it was very well put together. Did you send it? Then? Start at 9. 9. 9 a.m. Oh, okay. So this is breakfast. My ears are stuffed. <laughs> Anything else, Joe? Yeah. You sure? Uh, was there something in front porch forum you wanted to mention tonight? Oh, well, I don't even know if it's going to. This isn't going to be out for quite a while. It'll be old news. Oh, then I'm going to be running for yes. right then? Yes. Yeah, that's okay. going to be old news by the time anyone hears this. Well, Carla's hearing it. Carla's hearing it. And I read it. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Am I allowed to ask a question? Sure. I didn't know if possibly with the heater, I know it's a small budget item, 15 grand, well, it's 15 to limit. Would we maybe get a lot of help, maybe free efficiency, Vermont? Uh, we are actually uh, exploring that, um, and also with Green Mountain Power to see what the options Good. are. So you're taking care of. Okay, uh, Flo. I just wanted to add that I do hope folks will come out for the pie breakfast. It's wonderful. I myself cannot be there this year. I'm on a trip that day, so. Um, otherwise I would but it's something I had prearranged but I will be sending good vibes and I wanted to add that I think Saturday went really really well with the pre-town meeting and I want to thank everyone as part of the involvement that day and uh, tour you did a tremendous job in presenting as well very much appreciated and also thanks to the Berlin volunteer fire department lunch was amazing again and uh, all presentations were very thorough 
and I still have Girl Scout cookies left. Mm -hmm. Not many, but <laughs> they smell so good. It's kind of embarrassing out. talking to the doctor this morning, <laughs> but uh, it was a nice day, and that was nice. They were there selling them. It was great. I missed them last year. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, Carla. Anything? No, still sick. Oh, sorry to hear. That's all right. I'm getting better. We'll bring you soup. Yeah, okay, uh, Dork. Uh, I have two things. Um, currently in our personnel policy, we allow a boot allowance of $150. Um, and, and you saw the check in there for one of the uh, highway employees. Uh, I'll put it forth that maybe in a future meeting we consider increasing that. Because um, mm -hmm. that doesn't look like it's covering the cost. The cost mm -hmm, nowadays. Mm -hmm, so, um, mm -hmm. More on that coming. Uh, the other thing I wanted to address was a front porch forum posting this evening. Um, two concerns with misinformation on that post. Uh, the first, inquiring if there needed to be a bidding process for the sale of the town land. Uh, there does not. There is no requirement in state statute or our charter to have a bidding process. So we are totally in compliance with that. Uh, the other thing is uh, she had mentioned increased traffic on Cross Tongue Road and um, navigating that lot through the town highway garage, door yard. Uh, that is not how that worked. If she had been at the pre-town meeting, uh, she would have seen the presentation where the access to that lot would be through the um, property out or the comfort in. So two pieces of misinformation from that posting, which you hear again being this close to the meeting, won't get to you know, get out before then. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No. Mm -hmm. Entertain a motion to adjourn. I make the motion to adjourn tonight's regularly scheduled select board meeting, but didn't we want to go into Oh, we do need to go into the oh, Before we oh, do oh, that. Oh, oh, oh. Yep. Didn't write that down. I move that we enter into executive session for personnel in accordance with 1 DSA 313A3. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 This is the point of meeting where I leave, right? <laughs>